I actually think they're, they're a married couple. I, I um, don't do any surgery, but I certainly have everyone on speed dial. I think you look at the patient. I, there's patients that absolutely need a facelift. I do think that lasers can, after a patient has a facelift, hold off maybe a second procedure or help with that. I also think um, that you can do a preventative aging, so maybe you would need surgery later. But I think upper bluffs and facelifts, I can't do those. I send out a lot of those. And, and I have 40 devices, so I can do pretty much everything I can with the lasers. And I think it's important, you know, the, the, the surgical, your surgical world, you have documentation Again, going back to the evidence-based stuff, you have documentation. Hey, facelift works. In 10, 15 years, you may need to do something else or whatever. But in the fractional world, we, we don't have it yet. So I'm actually in the process of finishing a very large case series with one of my plastic surgical colleagues in China um, on five-year results from a blade of fractional CO2. Um, and it's probably the largest series that's ever gotten to five years. So um, we hope to have that in maybe David's journal soon. <laughs> David. So, so I, I think, you know, irrespective of what is superior, the marketplace has told us that the non-surgical techniques are what people want. Um, and we talked about technologies that don't work and do disappear with time. And obviously, plenty of these technologies do work and, and have stayed. And, you know, I, I think we just look at this meeting, the number of dermatologists who now come to this meeting versus the number who came five, ten years ago. Um, you know, there, there is a huge role for these non-invasive technologies, even if they didn't work anywhere near as well as the surgical techniques. Jason? So, you know, look, look back. Let's ask another question, okay? What's better, fat grafting or facelifting? You know, they do different things. So, you know, my favorite facial case will be facelift for excision of excess skin and repositioning, fat grafting for volume, and laser resurfacing for the things that laser resurfacing does. But the, the, in terms of our practices, I think actually what I've done is pushed out some things. So facelifts are perhaps at a slightly older age than they might have been. We don't do facelifts on their four, on 40 year olds like they did probably in the past. We'll probably do Althera first on someone who comes in in their 40s and maybe somebody with a little neck laxity will then do some either um, thermi or something else to the neck and then we'll do a facelift on an older patient. So everything's very complementary in our practice and we have lots of options. And again, I agree with everyone here that the, you know, the non-surgical things are getting better and better and better, but they're not replacing surgical options for the older patients.